Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I will recap a movie called The Lazarus Project, which was released in 2008. So, let's get into it without further delay and enjoy this amazing sci-fi thriller. Ben Garvey is telling her daughter Katie a story about a jaybird he killed when he was younger, but after killing it, he felt bad and prayed for it to return, so the bird begins to fly again. As he finishes the story, his wife Lisa enters and requests that they go to bed. After putting Katie to bed, Lisa talks to Ben and says that she is very happy that his parole is finally coming to an end. The next day at work, Ben says to his co-worker that he is very happy today, so it would be better if he couldn't hear about any problems. They say that unfortunately one of the supply trucks has gotten into an accident, so he has to look into it. Ben talks to his boss Danny about the situation and gets praised for becoming a great employee. When he comes back home, his wife Lisa is working on something and tells him that she is studying for a test to get a job, and it will take almost five months, but she is sure she will get the job, and hopefully Ben will be the head of the new branch their company is opening. She wants to move to the country, and even though Ben is hesitant about his job, she says that his boss likes him a lot, so there is no way he will not get the job. That night, Ben gets a surprise visit from his brother Ricky, who was in jail. They talk at night, and Ben says sorry to his brother for not visiting him in jail, but Ricky says he understands that Florida is far, and jail is not a very good place when you have a daughter. As they are talking, Ricky says that he wants Ben to go with him on a gold dust robbery. He says that the laboratory containing the dust is very secured with the supercomputers or locks that are used in the military, and Ben can easily go through them. But Ben refuses to say that he already spent time in jail, and when he got out, his daughter was already three years old, so now he can't risk going back inside. Ricky goes away, and that night Ben falls asleep with a lit cigarette in his hand but soon wakes up from a nightmare, and they remain safe from any kind of incident. The next morning, Ben goes to work, and his boss soon calls him into the office. Danny says that he has to let Ben go because the owners ran a background check and found his criminal record. Danny says that he understands that people make mistakes, and he tried to fight for Ben, but they are trying to fire him for three months, so he can't do anything about it now. When he comes back home, his wife is passionately studying for her test, so he just goes to bed without telling her about the job. A disappointed Ben calls his brother and says that he changed his mind about the robbery and that he will meet him tomorrow night. The next night, he goes to see his brother and discovers that they are joined by a third person named Phelps. Ben asks Ricky to get rid of the man, but Ricky says that he owes someone a lot of money, and they sent Phelps, so he can't do anything about it now. Reluctantly, Ben agrees, and they all go to the hidden laboratory. Ben works on the locks and lets them in. He goes to retrieve the gold dust while Ricky and Phelps keep all the doctors working their hostage, but they refuse to notice a girl hiding under the desk. The girl presses the police alarm button, and soon the police attack them, killing Ricky and Phelps. A guard also gets murdered in the feud. When Ben comes out after taking the dust, he is shocked to see the scene in front of him, but before he could do anything, someone hit him on the head, making him unconscious. A trial takes place against Ben, and they declare him guilty of the charges. They say that he committed the crime that led to the deaths of three people, so he is guilty of three counts of capital murder and is sentenced to Beaumont Supermax, where he will await his execution. He spends two years in jail and appeals at the Supreme Court, but his lawyer informs him that his request has been rejected, and even though he didn't kill anybody, he was present at the crime scene, and the court finds him guilty. His lawyer asks him to be prepared for his execution, as the process is moving very quickly. Later, Ben meets with his wife and daughter one last time. Katie asks him when he will be back home, but Ben says that he did something very bad that he didn't mean to do, and now he has to go away for a very long time. He says that he will never come back home, but he will always love her. After that, he is seemingly executed by lethal injection. In the next scene, a man is walking on the road with the hood covering his face when a car stops beside him and the driver offers him a ride, which he accepts. After sitting in the car, the man takes off his hood, revealing Ben. He informs the man that he is the new groundskeeper at Mount Angel Psychiatric Hospital. The man who is driving the car is Father Ezra, who also runs the hospital. He drops Ben off, gives him directions to the hospital, and then goes to park the car. Later, Ezra gives a tour to Ben and briefs him about the work he has to do. While touring, Ben sees someone standing in the shadows in a dark room, but he quickly closes the door and goes away. After that, Ben goes to his room, where he sees a man named Avery, who asks him how he is adjusting and says it can be difficult at the start, but with time it will get better. Ben asks where he is, and the man says that he is in a town named Oregon and is alive. Ben says that he doesn't want all of this and wants to go back home, but Avery says that he made a selfish choice and people died because of that, so now he can't see his family again. He says that Ben got a second chance at life, but he will have to stay here because, out of this place, only death is waiting for him. In the morning, Ben starts working in the garden, where he meets another man named Robbie. Robbie claims that he is not insane, as many people believe that just because you are here means you are insane. He then asks Ben about his dad, but Ben says that he killed himself when he was just a kid. 
Robbie then says that people are watching us, and he doesn't know how, but they are always watching. Later, Ben is at the cabin he got to live in when he dreams about his wife. He gets up and calls the services to find the number of his wife, but they say that there is no one listed with this name. The next morning, he meets Julie, who is a counselor at the hospital, and they both have nice small talk. Ben goes to lock up a jail after that, but the man inside attacks him and holds him by the collar. He asks Ben why he didn't stop him, to which Ben says that it was an accident. But the man whose name is William says that there is no such thing as an accident but only the things we do and what those things do to other people. Finally, Ezra appears and asks William to let go of Ben. Ezra then tells Ben that this building is for patients who can't be controlled, and it is best if he stays away from there. Ben is returning to his jungle cabin one night when a dog appears from the bushes and follows him to his cabin. Ben tries to get rid of the dog, but it is persistent, and Ben finally gets it inside when it starts raining heavily at night. He searches the internet the next day and finds a video of his wife and daughter, which gives him motivation, and he decides to go to Texas, where the video was filmed. On the bus, Avery meets him again and says that Ben can't be on the bus. He says that Ben should just let it go and accept what is given to him. Avery says that death is around him, and that is what he hears in the jungle. He cheated it once, but he can't do it twice. He says that the bus will not take him home, and he will not be able to see his family. Ben gets scared by the speech and gets off the bus. The next day at the hospital, he sees the news about the bus getting into an accident. That night, he sees a man carving something on the tree and follows him. He finds that the man is the patient Williams and asks him about the symbol, but he doesn't reply. William just says that they can't get out of there, and Ben should know this because he is just like him. After a few days, a desperate William commits suicide in front of Ben, leaving him traumatized. Ezra comforts Ben and says that William tried to get out of there, but Mount Angel was his home and he couldn't accept it, and sometimes acceptance is the best medicine. Ben keeps getting haunted by a man in all black clothing, and one day he shouts at him to leave him alone. At night, Ben gets a vision of his wife asking him to come back home. He tries to run away, but they capture him and bring him back to the hospital. When he wakes up, Ezra talks to him and says that Ben is also a patient and was brought here after the accident. He claims that Ben fell asleep one day with a cigarette lit in his hand, causing a fire that killed his family, and that everything about robbery and murder was hallucinations. Ben doesn't believe him and says that he came here to work and lived in the cabin, but Ezra says that it was all hallucinations. Ezra says that he wanted to forgive himself and move on, which is why he saw an angel asking him to move on, but his guilt created the demon he was seeing in the jungle. Ben talks to Julie and asks her about the time they spent in his cabin, but she also says that she doesn't remember anything like that. Ben is confused about the situation when, one day, while walking on the grounds, he finds a frisbee he lost while playing with his dog. He goes to a nearby animal shelter and finds his dog. He starts digging and finds that he is subject to some experiment, and William was also part of that. He also finds that all those things were not hallucinations, but they were just making him believe that, and they have a hidden camera in his cabin. Enraged, he attacks the hospital at night and finds Angel and Avery in a doctor's coat. Ben almost kills the man, but Ezra stops him in time. Ben confronts Ezra about the situation, but Ezra says that they are doing rehabilitation rather than killing people and want to see if people will change their violent behavior if given a new life and environment. Ezra insists that they are saving lives, but Ben says that they are torturing people without their consent. Ben then says that he is getting out of there, and the only way they can stop him is by killing him. Ezra tries to convince him that it is for the best, but Ben doesn't listen and drives away in his car. He goes directly to his house, where he reunites with his family. Thanks for watching the recap. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video so you don't miss any content from us. Stay tuned for more thrilling and amazing movies. See you soon. Bye.